Hey there, cats and kittens. My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM videos and I'm also dipping my toes into true crime. And if you really think about it, isn't multi-level marketing criminal? Today's video is a marriage of sorts between multi-level marketing and true crime. So buckle up, buttercup. Now, just so you know, I'm in the middle of moving and I can't remember all this information, so I have my script in front of me. I'm probably going to have some B-roll going, but if I'm on camera and you see me looking down, it's because I have to read what I've written. I can't remember it all. Maybe one day I'll get fancy, have a fancy teleprompter, have a fancy camera, but until then, I have a webcam, I have the background that I have, which is less than stellar, and it is what it is, but let's get on with the show, so to speak. Editing Alonda here. Okay, well, I decided, you know what? B-roll is just going because as I was recording this, I couldn't remember Jack. I guess that has to do with the move. I'm under a lot of stress, guys. So, you know what? Enjoy the B-roll and at some point, you know, I'll show up again, but I just can't right now. So I hope you understand and thank you so much for watching. The contents of this video is based on my research experience and opinions. It is intended for entertainment purposes only. You might say that I side-eye the MLM industry. Anyone I mention in this video is a public figure or their information is readily available on the internet. All you need to do is just Google. Please do not send any hate to any individuals mentioned or anyone participating in this industry. As always, please do your own research and please be kind to each other and me in the comment section. I am critiquing an industry that I find problematic and those who create MLM companies or companies that supposedly help you be successful in MLM. Warning, the following presentation is intended for mature audiences. It contains graphic descriptions of crime scenes, adult dialogue, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Ellery Bennett was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for stabbing to death his wife, Lisa, of 13 years. Lisa was a successful sales executive for Lilly Pharmaceuticals. If you have watched my videos before, then you may be familiar with the various tactics multi-level marketing companies use to ensnare people into participating in a questionable business in which most people lose more money than they make. Reviewing the income disclosure statements of companies such as Beachbody, it becomes very evident that only a very small fraction are able to make a livable wage. But at what cost? Is it possible that participating in this type of business can cause so much mental anguish that a person loses their identity because they are chasing after an unachievable goal? Or if they are part of the sliver of people who do make money, is it possible for people to become so damaged that they do not recognize that their actions harm others? These are some of the questions to keep in mind as we explore the case of Ellery Bennett. Who is Ellery Bennett? According to his LinkedIn profile, which is still up, Ellery refers to himself as a realtor, short sales expert, and REO specialist. His goal was to assist people in recognizing that life offers infinite possibilities. He states the difference between the people at the top 3% and the other 97% of people is belief. It's that simple. The only person that stops you from achieving what you want is you. His specialties include offering an armoratum of home business opportunities for those with a high level of desire, travel business, personal development, coaching, and training. Court records indicate that Ellery and his wife were being sued by Paramount Bank for defaulting on loans totaling nearly $600,000 for his home-based business called EB Management. In addition to EB Management, Ellery had three other companies, Motown Home Buyers LLC, Bennett Ventures LLC, and Cal Management LLC. Ellery worked in sales for several pharmaceuticals for about seven years prior to starting his venture in a home-based business. In 2003, Ellery began working for Novartis as a specialty sales manager. His wife, Lisa, was also in pharmaceutical sales and they both earned a six-figure income. So let me ask you this. Don't you think experience in sales might give you a leg up in multi-level marketing? I say this because there is someone in my former MLM, Beachbody, who was in pharmaceutical sales and she grew a very large team. I have to ask why would anyone who was already making 
six figures join an MLM. What do you think was the lure to Ellery? As someone who is a recovering Hunbot and someone who has covered many MLMs on this channel and the various tactics that are used, to me, this all just reeks of MLM jargon. Specifically, it aligns with the law of attraction, which centers on your personal beliefs, creating your own reality. Overall, MLM teaches you and indoctrinates you to believe that the only reason anyone fails in this type of business is because they did not have the right mindset and did not work hard enough. MLMs push working hard and intertwine the overall opportunity with the American dream. Failure is purely your own fault and nothing more. In their opinion, it cannot be the system because the system of MLM equalizes everyone and anyone and everyone according to the MLM philosophy can create a life of freedom with residual income as long as you have the right work ethic, are willing to work hard, never give up, and continue to hone in your mindset. It all starts and stops with crafting the right type of thinking. Now, if to you this starts sounding a bit cultish, you're right. When you start to peel back the layers of multi-level marketing, it really aligns very much to Stephen Hassan's BITE model, which stands for behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. Now, I've covered how all of that is aligned to all of it in other videos, so I'm not going to do that here. It's just simply a reminder. Critical thinking is not allowed in multi-level marketing. In fact, questioning the plan or system given to you is more than just frowned upon you become a traitor of sorts. If you don't have the right belief that MLM leads everyone to the promised land, you're the problem. In general, to join such a company, you purchase a starter pack. The price varies depending on the company. It can be $49, $99, $495, and upwards of $5,000. To remain active so that you can qualify to potentially earn money from the opportunity, you typically need to have what's called volume points which relate to purchasing the product. In essence, the distributors of multi-level marketing companies self-consume the product or service so that they can maybe have the opportunity to perhaps one day earn money, and most do not. In March of 2007, Ellery joined Liberty League International, or LLI. It was founded by Brent Payne and Shane Kreider in 2001 and based in Scottsdale, Arizona. Shane Kreider is a Scientologist. If you know anything about Scientology, then you know it costs a lot of money to continue purchasing courses so that you can move up the bridge to total freedom. LLI's business involved members purchasing conference tickets and a home study course and then reselling what was purchased to the general public or sell to people they wanted to join their team and become an associate. If you join as an associate, then you become part of the referring associates downline. This sounds eerily a lot like Darren and Mike's dream team, the ACE initiative and the breakaway movement, which I have a playlist on all of that. All of them are associated with the MLM called Enagic. You might want to check that out. Let's take Darren and Mike. They sell you a course for $149 and in turn, you have the opportunity to sell the same course to others and so on. However, the course is really a cover to get people to join a magic by which you spend $5,000 on this water filtration thingamabob. It's just a one-off. No one is going to be buying multiple machines at that price. Mark Lalonde also did something similar with his branding university. It's all about becoming an affiliate with him and then selling to others the exact same thing. Now he is pushing something called the Laboom Squad. And he also joins different MLMs, gets people to join them, and then in turn, he just kind of like, you know, leaves. He does all of this just to recruit people so that he can make money. And he kind of tells you that if you follow what he says, you're going to be the one that makes money. But the money really goes in his pocket. This type of setup requires a constant rebranding of sorts, which I will get to later because when I started digging into all of this, boy, it is one twisted tale. The concept of all of this needing to rebrand is probably why LLI was rebranded in 2009 and became Polaris Media, which is now Polaris Global. Polaris Media Group is an international community of successful men and women 
who believe in social responsibility through entrepreneurism and developing highly motivated, self-sufficient, and successful people. Our goal is instilling competence through the application of proven entrepreneurial principles. Creating effective media products and events fulfills our passion to reveal the true nature of the human spirit. According to the Better Business Bureau, Polaris Global is not accredited, and it's classified as a self-improvement coach that offers documentary films, personal success education, and educational seminars. When you look up Polaris Global on Google, you are taken to the Prosperity of Life Online Business Manager page, which is powered by Polaris. If you'd like me to dive deeper into Polaris Global, let me know what you think in the comments. I actually have some ideas because, like I said, this is a very twist and turn. And I really think there could be a timeline created of the various different companies that are all associated with the same people that lead back to LLI. Prosperity of Life offers a home-based business and life coaching. Like I said, this is all fake it till you make it, and it's intimately connected to multi-level marketing. Now, Ellery, while he was in pharmaceutical sales, was making six figures, as was his wife. But apparently, that wasn't enough for him, and he opted to join multi-level marketing. There are four defunct websites associated with Ellery's LinkedIn profile, selfgrowth.com, from 2008 to 2009. As a side note, Ellery quit his corporate job in 2008 with the idea to focus and grow his multi-level marketing business. In 2009, he is noted as the business owner of beliefsachoice.com, flourishandprosper.com, and highlevelofdesire.com. All of those are listed as 2009 to present. On February 16th of 2007, Richard and Colleen Herrick filed a lawsuit against LLI alleging the defendants, Brent Payne and Shane Kreider and John Does, made fraudulent misrepresentations which caused them to purchase the home-based business products offered by LLI. The suit was dismissed when Herrick withdrew it on May 2nd of 2007. Then on November 7th of 2007, the Herricks again filed an instant suit claiming violation of RICO statute, RICO conspiracy, and violation of OSPA, a common law fraud. However, they were not able to provide enough evidence to be granted relief. And this is why, if you have been involved in multi-level marketing, you need to file with the FTC. There has to be a paper trail, meaning multiple people in the same year filing on the same MLM. Side note. It's not uncommon for these sorts of operations to have a run for a while until people start complaining. Typically, those that create these companies just go on and create something with a new name and look that operates in the same way. Hence, in 2009 is the year when LLI was rebranded to LGN Prosperity Group. Each of those websites that Ellery has sound very personal development to me, very Law of Attraction MLM-ish. And it makes sense because Ellery considered himself to be an expert on the law of attraction. In my opinion, since Shane is a Scientologist and there are a ton of courses in Scientology, the beginning courses cost around $650 and then to be audited, that's around $800 per hour. So you might be wondering, why would Shane create something like this? Well, I think it's kind of like to fuel the need to keep taking courses. And do you think it's possible that he would bring other people into Scientology? Is it possible that Ellery was actually involved in Scientology as well? I don't know. I didn't find any evidence on that, but I'm just throwing out there, you know, a question because that could explain why there's so much debt. So you might be wondering, what does it cost to be part of this opportunity? And how could anyone get themselves in a financial bind due to multi-level marketing? Myself, I spent you know, upwards of $20,000 in total in my attempt at building financial freedom. And many people spend much, much more. So how do you become wealthy with this opportunity? Great question. To become part of this opportunity, you need to spend $49.95 just to become an associate. And once you do that, there are products you can sell, but you have to qualify to be able to sell them. 
the products consist of three different personal development options. Beyond Freedom, a 90-day home study course, which goes for or went for $1,495. The Liberty Conference, which was a three-day conference, and that was $7,995. And the Summit Conference, which was a five-day conference, which was $12,995. Once you join, you are qualified to sell beyond freedom, but you make no money on your first five sales. That money is past your upline. However, you do earn 66% on each sale. But if you buy the Beyond Freedom course yourself, you are only required to make two other sales rather than five. According to their income disclosure, 85% of active associates earn $13,000 annually. Annually, $13,000, 85%. That's not a lot of money. That's not a livable wage. For each sale, like I said, you earn 66%. So for doing the math, 1,000 for Beyond Freedom, 5,000 for the Liberty Conference, and 8,000 for the Summit Conference. All in all, the profit is a one-off. So you must continually recruit people to make a purchase and have them do the same. Imagine the pressure to get people to fork out this type of money so that you can become a six-figure earner. When you're part of an MLM, there's a lot of pressure to attend these conferences. And I'm sure the pressure was on for Ellery to attend each and every one. For Ellery to amass so much debt towards his online home business, I have to wonder if Ellery purchased these materials more than once under his different company names with the intent of reselling them to his prospects. I just have to wonder if maybe he was told that's the way to grow, purchase these and then resell them. I know that might sound like a bit of a stretch, but considering when I was in Beachbody, it was common to be encouraged to sign up two people underneath you right away, your husband, your best friend, your mother, I mean, someone close to you so that you could quote unquote rank up immediately so that you would be able to earn more money. I think it could be possible that Ellery did buy multiple instances of the conferences and the course. What do you think? But I also would think that he would be going to each of these conferences at least once a year. So let's do the math on how much is he spending, you know, or did he spend, might have spent just going to these conferences. The three-day Liberty Conference is $7,995. So for three years, that'd be $23,985. Plus you would have to pay for airfare, which I'm gonna say is roughly about $600. So that would be another $1,800 plus hotel, which is going to be, you know, maybe around $2,000 plus food. So all in all, that's going to total around close to $30,000 with all of that. And then there's the summit conference, which is $12,995, which to go to all three of those is getting to be around $40,000 plus all the other expenses. So in total, all of that is probably around at least $75,000. This does not include, you know, website hosting or any other expenses that he might have incurred. So just going over all of that, I can easily see how being part of this quote unquote opportunity, it would be very easy to rack up some debt of around $100,000. Now, if he was buying multiple of these different conferences, doesn't it make sense why that, you know, amount would go up and up and up and he'd get further in, further in, further in with the idea that he was going to make it. You know what I mean? Ellery made some YouTube videos. They are not fancy and compared to what people create today, they're pretty low quality. However, he uses the same tactics that internet marketers and MLM hunts use today. He showcased he was living a life of freedom, had more time for his daughter and was encouraging people to join him. Meanwhile, the debt continued to grow and he had to continue to project success even when it was not the success that he claimed. That's the nature of being part of multi-level marketing. It's a dream, a fantasy, and it appears that Ellery believed fully in it like so many others, and like I did once upon a time. Imagine now that you're married to someone that quit their six-figure income job and you're seeing the debt growing with the promise that sometime in the future, it will all work out. I have heard plenty of stories of how multi-level marketing has ruined people financially and destroyed relationships. Plus I have my own story 
and I know how dead set I was to be up there at the top. I poured all of myself and much of our finances into the dream. Ellery is not alone with believing in the dream with so much debt, even though he puts on this front of having a life of freedom. This is very common. It's part of the multi-level marketing game. The concept of fake it till you make it was very much part of the program that Ellery was part of. In fact, if you bought in, you would be coached on how to lie about your success in the program when presenting the opportunity to purchase it to others. Like so many others, Ellery marketed himself as an expert in the law of attraction. In my opinion, Ellery was probably neck deep in the world of LOA and by so doing lost himself and was lured into the fantasy that this type of business works. Two weeks before her death, Lisa went to the township police station and asked what could be done if someone is potentially in a violent situation. Two years prior, the police received an emergency hang up from the Bennett home. When the officers arrived, Lisa told them that she and her husband had had an argument, but it was settled. Allegedly, Ellery pleaded guilty to an assault and battery in September of 1991 for claims he choked a girlfriend. In 2010, a week before her death, his wife, Lisa, filed for divorce. Ellery could not afford to have legal counsel because of all the debt. Also, he suspected his wife had been cheating, but there are also claims that he too had been unfaithful. On August 18th of 2010, Ellery stabbed his wife to death. His intent was to then take his own life, but then he couldn't go through with it. He went to the Beaumont Hospital and told them about killing his wife. Allegedly, there were several notes in the home the day Ellery killed Lisa. One was to a neighbor that he attempted to recruit. Bennett was charged with premeditated murder in the first degree and convicted to life in prison in February of 2011. Ellery was the primary beneficiary to Lisa Bennett's $1 million life insurance policy. Lisa's mother, though, was designated as the successor beneficiary. In 2012, Ellery appealed his conviction, arguing that there was not enough evidence to support his conviction. His appeal was denied. This case is an extreme example, in my opinion, that being pulled into MLM, you can become so involved in believing in the dream that spending money to achieve the dream is rationalized away. I say this because I did it. Once upon a time, I spent $5,000 on a course with the belief that being around the energy of this successful woman, I would get rid of what was blocking me mentally and I'd be able to attract the life I desire. And the person who did that, her name is Kat Ruth. That's who scammed me with that. Like many others, she continues to sell the dream of law of attraction. Law of attraction, in my opinion, is very addictive. Now, I have no idea what Ellery's mind was like back then. I do know that crippling debt coupled with a poor business model is a formula for disaster. I can only imagine to lose the support of your spouse when it comes to the multi-level marketing dream can be debilitating and that person can then become the target of why you are not making it. I'm not saying that this happened. I'm just conjecturing. Add to all of this alleged affair and everything, Ellery could not have been very stable mentally in my opinion. Now, I happened to check out Ellery's Twitter, and I found it a bit amusing to see that he was doing P90X, which is a Beachbody program by Tony Horton. His very last tweet was on February 21st of 2010. The thing is, Huns and bro Huns often support each other's business endeavors because they believe in the dream and they want each other to succeed. It's all very twisted, in my opinion. I've often said that I believe being part of a business like LLI, multi-level marketing, causes some sort of mental disorder. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist. This is based on my observations and the many stories that I've covered here on this channel. I am hoping that the data from my survey that I created will provide more insight as to how people are mentally impacted by MLM and also a bunch of other data. There's a link to that in the description. Please consider completing it if your life has been touched by multi-level marketing. Now, I don't know Ellery personally or anyone that does. I have not seen a psychological profile on the man, but I do question if being part of MLM could have impacted his mental health. I really do. It just, to me, it seems like very evident that it would have. This is why I think it's so important for social psychologists 
to start studying the impact of multi-level marketing on individuals. Until we have professionals taking a serious look at this global problem, those of us who are critics are going to lack the data that we need. Granted, we do have the income disclosure statements, the work of Robert Fitzpatrick, David Brer, Doug Brooks, and the late Dr. John Taylor, who have studied this phenomenon for decades, but we still need more. And we need professionals to help people heal from being part of this destructive beast. Ellery has a daughter, and I can't imagine how she or any of his family members are coping after this horrific crime. I wonder, or just wonder, have any of them gotten involved with MLM? Did he get any of them involved? Are they still involved? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. I do feel that this is a very cautionary tale. Be very careful out there in what opportunities you get involved in, because oftentimes they're just wolves in sheep's clothing. Now, what are your thoughts? let me know in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see me do, you know, kind of like a timeline of how these different companies start intersecting. I didn't go into all the different ones, but I did find quite a few because like I said earlier, I mean, people just tend to kind of rebrand and they branch off and they're just repeating the same thing over and over and over. And remember, you're beautiful and I love you. Mm -hmm.